All right, so let's look at the uh, Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro Sound Mix project files. You're going to find those in the uh, bonus editors folder here. So inside, you'll see a folder for Final Cut, a folder for Premiere Pro. I'm going to start with the Premiere Pro. Now, this is in the uh, CS5 format. So, of course, if you upgrade to CS5.5 or 6, you're uh, going to be asked to resave it. So just do so. And it should save by default right next to uh, CS5 here. Okay, so when you open up your project, you should have everything uh, should be all set and all connected. So you should by default see a, a GH full 1080p layout. This is going to be in the 1080p format. And you can, of course, go to 720p uh, or whatever you choose. So plus and minus on your keyboard is going to zoom in and zoom out. So you're going to see these markers up top in the timeline. And these are just guides for you to get a good idea of where to place the specific uh, points in the render. Uh, in this case of the full grindhouse render. Uh, but I did break it up into each project. So if you go into this folder here, number four called sequences, you're going to see that all the uh, projects are broken up from the full render to each project for the burnout pulp strip. So if you go to burnout for a second, you're going to see just the uh, sound mix for that specific project. Okay, so do remember to look at the sequences because everything's going to be right there. And everything is in 1080p at 24p, but you can, of course, change those settings to your liking. So the sounds are going to be uh, placed in the number two folder, sounds. You're going to see the music elements, sound effects, voiceover elements. Okay, so everything's going to be categorized into folders. Uh, the title cards and the slates are just there. You can get rid of those, but I thought I'd place that there. So if I go back into the full uh, timeline for a second, and I'm just going to import a render really quick. So here's an example of an old full render of the grindhouse. Okay, so in this case, I have the full render for the most part. I think this is an older version uh, but anyway somewhat the same so if I just drag and drop this out here so if you go to these markers here they're going to show you the specific uh, project point okay so we have the pulp strip burnout so on and so forth so you can kind of get a good idea if you just line this up and I'm going to go to one of the points where it kind of all right, so I'm going to just need to modify this because I know at this point is where that roar comes in. So if I look at the death roar, I'm just going to move this over a little bit. X, persons under 18 will not be admitted. Okay, so again, the music uh, has all been done by Mauro Colangelo and there's links to Mauro's music for the scores in the preview. So again, here is the Final Cut layout. Now, if for whatever reason your files end up going offline, um, you know, you always just want to go to File and select Reconnect Media and point the offline files to the folder uh, in the Sound Effects folder, okay? If that does happen. So as you can see here, just Command R. <laughs> And again, same setup, everything's laid out for you. And you're going to see the same thing, sequences here. It's going to be the same layout for, uh, as you saw in Premiere, it's just going to be the Final Cut interface. You're going to see the chapter markers set here as well. And that's it. Now let's just hop into Final Cut X quickly. In case for some reason you do need to import the XML directly into a new Final Cut Pro X project event, uh, this is the XML. You'd want to go to File, Import XML, and this is going to bring in the Grindhouse Mix. Okay, and I also saved it. This is from Final Cut 7. But you may want to go into this folder, and you're going to click on the events here. Looking into the Final Cut X here, you're going to go, and you're just going to see your uh, sequence here with all the folders and sounds. And you're going to look at this uh, Final Cut Pro 7 sequences.
So I just want to pop back into Premiere Pro for one second. This doesn't have to... So I just want to pop back into Premiere Pro for one second. Now this doesn't have so much to do with the sound as it does just to point out the idea that you have these mats uh, that you can use. You're, you're not only subjected to using them in After Effects, uh, you can use them in most nonlinear editing systems. Okay, so in this case I'm back in Premiere. And if I were to go to File, Import... So if I get something like a light leak really quick, I'm just going to say import folder. I'm going to bring back that sample for one second. So I'm just going to pop this on for one second. Not worried about lining it up so much right now. I just wanted to uh, make sure you understood that you could certainly use these mats in... A basic editor so if I just take this light mat for a second I'm just gonna pop it over the footage for a second and what I want to do is inside Premiere uh, if I right click I can select scale to frame size and because these mats are 4k and I'm working in a 1080p project uh, they're gonna be much larger than the timeline itself so if I were to zoom out for a second you can see here this 4K mat sitting on top of a 1080p setting. Now I can default that scale to frame size by simply going to Premiere up top here. I'm going to go to Preferences and I'm going to select General. And in the General tab here you're going to see a box that says Default Scale to Frame Size. I always have that checked on. So that way, anything you bring in that's made perhaps bigger or a little bit smaller, it's going to automatically scale to your timeline set. Okay, so now uh, all you have to do is in Premiere Pro or be it Final Cut, you just want to change the blending modes in the effects control box. So in this case, I can switch it from normal to something like overlay. Okay, and we can start to see that happening. So or if you change it to something like add okay so really simple and you can imagine putting this on your own footage uh, maybe stuff that you filmed for a project you know so even if you took in imported some uh, of these film burns for a set for example you know you can mess around with adding whatever you want to your timeline uh, with these mats and it's really just a matter of messing around with the blending mode so in Premiere Pro you're just going to go to the opacity here and uh, we'll change it up a little bit start to see different outcomes for it now you're going to have more flexibility with compositing in the case of film burns with uh, After Effects but you can really get the job done uh, if you're just kind of using it more for an overlay effect like you see here Okay, so it's no big deal. I just wanted to point that out that you could simply use these mats in your editor, be it the film burns, these light mats, and you can have a lot of fun with that with your own footage.